All right, well, if you were not here last week, we kicked off our series for Christmas called the Advent Conspiracy. And the whole point of the entire series is for us to be able to turn Christmas upside down in our lives. We talked last week about the fact that uh, as a culture, we kind of have this religion of radical consumerism that we practice. Whether we like it or not, we're all about buying, 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 buying. And we like to uh, surround ourselves with that. And we said that, you know, this should be the easiest time of the year to worship Jesus because the season is all about him. But unfortunately, oftentimes, this is the hardest time of the whole year to worship Jesus because we're so consumed with worshiping other things that we miss the true reason of worshiping the king. And so we said, you know, we want to turn this Christmas upside down. We want to conspire against the norm and push against uh, what culture tells us we should be focusing on in Christmas and push against that and say, instead of worshiping consumerism, we're going to worship the king and we're going to worship him fully. And we talked about what that looks like to actually worship him fully in our lives and to make sure that his presence takes precedence in our lives above all else. And today we're going to continue with our series and, and look at another aspect that we want to push against. Uh, within the culture and a different thing that we want to conspire against. And that is the idea of spending less. The idea of spending less. If you have your Bibles, open them up to Luke chapter 2. Because I want to show you two other, or a few other characters or, or people in the Christmas story that practice a principle that I think we need to grasp if we really want to conspire, if we really want to uh, push against the cultural norm of spend more and actually spend less. So let's read together. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 2, we're going to read verses 8 to 20. It says, Now there were shepherds living, near, living out in the field, keeping guard over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all people. Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph and found the baby lying in a manger. When they saw him, they related what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured up all these words, pondering in her heart what they might mean. So the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything was just as they had been told. Will you pray with me? Father, I believe that you have great things in store for each and every one of us this morning. And I believe that you want to speak to our hearts in a big way. So Father... I ask now that you would be with us in this place. That you would help us to fix our eyes on you. Lord, especially in this time of year, we have plenty of other things to be thinking about and planning for. But Father, I pray that right here, right now, you would be all we see. I pray that these words in your book would come to life in our hearts today. I pray that we would see you in these pages and in our lives. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together in your presence and focus on you and you alone. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So if I were to ask you if a million dollars would make you rich, how many would say, yeah, a million dollars, if I had a million, I'd be considered rich? I'm going to go ahead and raise my hand because I, I say yeah. Nobody wants to admit it. Maybe you all have millions of dollars, then we should talk after the service. Just kidding. <laughs> 
Okay, so you might not have heard this, but Fidelity Investments did a study not too long ago. This is a true story, I'm not making it up. And they surveyed a thousand millionaires, a thousand millionaires. Now the average net worth of those millionaires was about three and a half million dollars. Okay, so they asked those thousand millionaires, they said, would you consider yourself rich? What do you think their answer was? No. They said no. So Fidelity said, okay. They're like, well, why don't you figure out what you think is necessary to be considered rich? And they came back and they said, well, I think if we had about seven and a half mil, then, then we'd be okay, we could consider ourselves rich. I'm reading this study and I'm like, whoa, seven and a half million. Like, I think if I was a millionaire, even if it was like a million and one dollars, like I just skated in there, I'd be thinking I'm good to go for the rest of my life. <laughs> but yet the people that had the three million said, no, I'm not rich. I can't even fathom what three million dollars looks like. I can't. Never seen it a day in my life. And these guys have it, and they're saying, no, not enough. They said, if I had seven and a half million, then that would be enough. You know what's interesting? I bet you that if you were to ask the people that had seven and a half million dollars, if they thought they were rich, what do you think their answer would be? No. And it's because we have this mindset, and we're accustomed to this attitude of, I just need a little bit more. If I just had more, then I would be happy. If I just had this, if I just had that, then things would be so much better for me. I'd be able to relax, I'd be more content, I'd be able to have a good time. Everything would be better if I just had a little bit more. And our mindset is, well, if a little is good, then a lot is great. And we see that so clearly this time of year. Did you know that the average person will spend about $1,000 in the Christmas season? About $1,000, that's the average. And the holiday retail sales for the holiday season, the estimated total of all that put together is about $601 billion. Billion. $601 billion is what we will all spend in the holiday season. We have the, the mindset that if a little is good, a lot is great. And so I'm gonna keep going for more and more and more because what I have is just not enough. And we try to get all of these things. We try to find all of this stuff for ourselves or for other people because well, if I just had that, I'd be happy. I'd have so much more. I'd be so much better off. We see it with kids all the time. You know, we're always, our kids are always on to the next best thing, needing more and more and more. It's funny, last Christmas, Jen and I, one of the only times we've ever been super prepared for Christmas, we had bought all the kids, or, or, or we only have two, but it feels like a lot more, but we bought our kids their Christmas presents in October. And we're like, oh, this is great. We're golden, we don't have to deal with all the craziness. You know, we're set, we got good deals, all this stuff. Do you know what happened by the time December came? The toys that we bought in October, my kids could care less about those things because they were already three, four toys ahead of that. Because that's our mindset, the more, the more, the more, the next best thing, the next best thing. Ask yourself, how many of our basements, our attics, our garages are filled with things that we thought in that moment, if I just had this, everything would be different. How many of you guys have a Bowflex sitting in your basement? <laughs> exactly. When was the last time you used it? Exactly. How many of us has a pool table that, oh, if I just got this pool table, it would be great. I would have so much fun. I could even do ministry. I could ask my neighbors over. We could have a pool game and we could do some good stuff. I could tell them about Jesus. This will be great. I'm going to buy this. And now it's a very expensive laundry sorter. <laughs> we have the mindset, if I just had a little bit more, I'd be happy. More, more, more. 
Or if I just got a little bit more for the person in my life, they'd realize just how much I love them. The bigger, the better. The more expensive, the more love. I love watching the Jaguar commercials at Christmas time. If you just gave your wife a Jaguar, <laughs> she'll love you forever. It must be true, it's on TV. We have the mindset of more and more and more. If a little is good, a lot is great. And you know, as we go through this Christmas season, I wonder if that mindset's not that far off, if it was focused in the right area of our lives. One thing that I've learned is that I can never try and get a material possession to give spiritual significance in my life. No matter how hard you try, no matter how expensive the gift, you will never be able to make a material possession give spiritual significance in your life. But if I just had a little bit more, I'd be happy. You're right, you would, but not of that possession, but of the person that we celebrate in Christmas. If a little is good, a lot is great. So we want to conspire to push against the norm that says spend more on yourself to make yourself happy and say we're going to spend less so that we can focus on the person and not the possessions. The shepherds, they, they lived this principle out and they didn't know it because they experienced it firsthand. They experienced firsthand that if a little is good, a lot is great. And they recognized that when you're not so consumed with all the things, then you can see God in ways that you never saw him before. And what I want to do, I want to look at the shepherd's account of this, this event today. And I want to look at our lives and see what happens if we lived a little bit more like the shepherds. And we decided to spend less. Because what I found is when you spend less, you actually see and you actually get more. The first thing that we see with the shepherds is that when you spend less, when you spend less, you'll see God moving spiritually way more than you could ever move materially. Way more will you see spiritually than yourself moving materially. Look at the first few verses. It says, Shepherds living out in the field, keeping guard over their flock at night. It says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. I got good news for you. Today, your Savior is born. He's Christ the Lord. You'll find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Then says, suddenly a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. Now, now listen to this. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph, and found the baby lying in a manger. So here we have the shepherds. They're out in a field keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now what we know about the shepherd is they were um, the blue collar guys of the community, okay? They were the ones with the dirt under their nails, okay? They were, and now they were working the night shift. Now if any of you know anyone or you work the night shift, you know it takes a very special person to work the night shift. Not everybody can hack it. You gotta, you gotta be with it, you gotta be tough, you gotta be gruff, you gotta be strong. That's what these shepherds were, okay? They weren't your typical uh, kind of sit back with your feet up in my nice cozy house with the fire warm in my toes. They weren't that kind of people. 
They were the guys that were out getting their hands dirty, doing what they needed to do to make a living and to get by. And it says that the angels came to these shepherds and they say, hey, we got something to tell you. Today, your savior is born. Your savior is born. Notice that it doesn't say the savior of the wealthy, the savior of the people that got all their stuff together, the savior of the people that are at home in their their nice cozy houses. He's saying your savior has been born. Now enter the story with me this morning. You're considered the lowest of the low. You're sitting in the field, middle of the night, an angel comes with a special message just for you. And then you're sitting there and it says the sky's filled with angels praising God, glorifying God, saying glory to him in the highest. That's what's happening right in front of these shepherds' eyes. The place where they are is filled with God's presence. And then it says, the angels are gone. And what did the shepherds do? It says they got up and they said, let's go and find this baby. Now what we know about shepherds is that moment made quite an impact on their lives because they weren't the type of people to be so quick to just run to the next thing. The next fad shows up and it's like, okay, let's go check that out. No, that wasn't gonna happen. They weren't gonna move. They weren't gonna dedicate that time to go to find this other baby. If something didn't happen in their lives spiritually in a big way, what happened in this moment? Heaven invaded earth. Heaven invaded earth and it changed them miraculously. God moved spiritually in the lives of these shepherds and they got up, got up and moved physically. They moved materially. How often do we look for our material possessions to create a spiritual significance in our lives? If I just got them this, they'd be so much happier. And we become so consumed with the presence, so consumed with the gifts, so consumed with the practices that we miss what God is doing in the moment. Because all we cared about were the things and the possessions. When we spend less, when we step back, like we talked last week and focus on him, we'll have eyes to see God moving spiritually in big ways in our lives because our vision won't be cloudy and blurry by the things of this world. And I wonder if you're doing that this Christmas season. Are you taking the time to step back to make room for him in your life and to see him moving spiritually. You know, we, we think that, okay, the, the, the skies opened up, there were angels everywhere. That's a, that's a huge moment. That's every day in heaven. Okay, so for the shepherds, that little bit was good. That little glimpse that they got of God moving spiritually was good. So good, they got up and left what they were doing to go and find this baby. That little bit was good when it was focused on the person and not a possession. And then look look what happens when they go and find him. It says, when they saw him, they related what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were astonished at what the shepherds said. Then verse 20, it says, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything was just as they had been told. If a little is good, a lot is great. 
And when we step back, when we push against the cultural norms of Christmas and say we're not going to be so consumed with our little gods of presents and possessions and material things, and we step back and we say we're going to sit and watch God move spiritually in our lives, in our moments, in our situations, then our lives tell the story more than our presents. Our lives tell the story more than our presence. It says the shepherds went. They go and they see Jesus face to face. Think about it. They got to the stable. They got to where Jesus was. They saw him with their own eyes. And something changed in them. Now we know the fact that they just went and looked for him had a significant uh, move in their hearts. But as you read on, and you see that they began to share with everyone around them what they had experienced, and then it says that they returned glorifying and praising God. You know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the presence of Jesus changed everything about them. The shepherds were the type of people that if you saw them walking down the street, you crossed to the other side. You wanted nothing to do with them. They were mean. They were angry. They had a grudge on everything. They hated the world. There was a reason they were out in the field with the sheep. But it says that everyone was drawn to what they were saying. And the shepherds returned, they were glorifying, they were praising God. Picture this rough, gruff, big, huge, tall person that, that they, they're just, they're the meanest of the mean and all of a sudden you see them and you look twice because you're like, wait a minute, that can't be true. But they're skipping down the road because God's presence in their life changed them so much that they couldn't be the person that they were. And they had to change. And that's what happens when we focus on his presence in our lives. And our lives will tell a greater story than our gifts and our presence ever can. That's what happens when we allow God to move in our lives in a mighty and a miraculous way. No material possession can ever create spiritual significance in anyone's lives. The only thing that can give you that spiritual sense of fulfillment, that peace, that love, that joy, that grace, that mercy, nothing, nothing else that we can purchase here can ever give us that. The only one that could ever buy our love was Jesus and he bought it on that cross when he paid for our sins. No present will ever compare to that. And that is what we celebrate at Christmas. That is who we worship fully. That is why we step back and spend less and say, I'm not going to buy into this consumer mentality. I'm not going to try to buy my relative's love. I'm not going to try to prove my significance with a possession because it's already been proven in a person. Do you worship your Savior today? The shepherds' lives were completely changed because heaven invaded earth and Jesus interrupted their story. And that's what we celebrate. If a little is good, a lot is great when it's focused on the person of Jesus and not just a possession here on earth. The shepherds I can only imagine. They think that looking in the sky and seeing the angels, if I was them, I would have thought that's probably as good as it gets. And then they get to Jesus. And everything changes. And I wonder if you've allowed him to change you today. 
If you've allowed him to invade your life in such a way that nothing else matters. I love that it says, the shepherds returned. The shepherds returned. It doesn't say that the shepherds get to where Jesus is. They have this unbelievable moment where Jesus invades their lives, interrupts their story, and everything about them changes, and they sit down and set up shop and say, I'm just going to stay here. But it says they returned. They went back to the lives that they were given. But they went back changed. And they went back in his strength. And they went back to tell everyone and let everyone see the power of Jesus in their lives. You know, find me anywhere in scripture, anywhere in this book, where someone experiences the power of Jesus in their lives and God lets them stay there and keep it all to themselves. You won't find it. You won't. Every time in scripture that we see someone experience the power of Jesus, they then go, take what they've received for themselves and give it out to everyone and anyone because they know it's too good to hold for themselves. And that's the story that our lives need to be telling. That we worship a God who invaded earth, who came and dwelt with us to give us a relationship with him and change everything about us. That's the better story. What story would you rather tell this Christmas? The story of how much debt you're bringing into January? Or the story of the Savior that came in and changed everything about you? Let's tell a better story. So as we close, I, I want to give you some encouragement. Because we're all in here in different places in our, in our relationship with Jesus. Some of us we're the shepherds in the field. Well, we're not, we're not sure yet. We don't know what's going on. Then I pray with all my heart that this Christmas, that today, now, this moment is the moment where heaven invades your life, where Jesus makes himself real to you. And if you're here, I, I pray that if you've never seen Jesus in your life, that this story would be proof that everything he did was for you. And if you're here today and, and you're not in the field anymore because you went, you've seen Jesus in your life. You've seen him move. He's changed you in a miraculous way and you know it beyond the shadow of a doubt. Then go home. Go back and let your life speak to that change. Let your words, let your actions, let your attitudes this Christmas be just like the shepherds were where everyone was drawn to them because they could see the change that Jesus made in their lives. And I wonder, this Christmas season, if the people around you can even tell that you're worshiping a savior or a present under a tree. Let's tell a better story, church. Let's tell a better story. Let's pray. Father, Father, I ask you with all of my heart for those of us who are in here today that need you to invade our lives, that it would happen in this moment.
Father, thank you that you are so big, that you are so great, that you are so strong, you are so creative, that you can meet every single person in this room in this exact moment in a completely different way that will speak to each and every one of our hearts. And so Father, I ask that you would do that now. Lord, I ask that heaven would invade earth in this place today. And Father, I ask now for those of us that we've seen you. We've seen you in our lives. We've put our trust in you. We're walking in relationship with you. Father, give us the courage to go home and tell the world with our words and with our actions that you are who we celebrate. Because you are all that matters. Father, I pray that we would all step back. That we would push against this idea that we have to spend, 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 spend. And we would step back and we would see you and fully worship you. That your presence would take precedence over all things in our lives this Christmas season. I pray this in Jesus' name.